Hello everybody, Courtney here, the New Mexico Stitching Demon. Um, obviously you saw what we're going through nature-wise with the little clip I showed you before this. It's actually gotten bad since, actually worse, uh, since that little clip. Dane has left for work for the night. He'll be back after midnight, so hopefully he drives safe. And So now I'm going to do this. I've got my tea, because my throat is raw, I'm guessing weather reason. Oh, and this is what I'm drinking. The Ruibos Tropico Tivana Tea. This is some good stuff. Normally I would drink Earl Grey from Herbal, from a Tivana, but I kind of drink it all. <laughs> so... Um, so obviously we are working on Three Baby Dragons, like I mentioned, I'm going into the second week of this and then I'll be doing uh, Legend of Dragoon next week, so. Um, so yeah, um, as you can see I've gotten quite a bit done. I've gotten the first baby dragon's head in and I have named all three of the dragons and this one is Darby. I don't know why, he just said, hey, my name's Darby. So, there we go. What are you doing, Melissa? <sighs> She's just kind of jumping around, being being weird. So, anyway. How's everything where you guys are at today? Hopefully you guys aren't getting the same crappy weather we are. But, you know, it's getting to be that time of year Melissa stop eating the wall I'm just double counting where one I'm uh, recording Doctor Who and Walking Dead tonight because I would rather watch it with Dane tonight or tomorrow because he's off tomorrow. As am I. Ooh, you guys can't even see what I'm doing. Sorry. One. See, before I sat down to stitch, I had me a moment. I was literally getting ready to sit down. I had my cup of tea in my hand, and there was a fucking spider crawling across my planner. For school scared the shit out of me, and of course, I spilled tea on my lap. Lost one of my magnets, and for a moment lost one of my needles. <laughs> I was not happy. I do not like spiders. I am terribly arachnophobic. And I thought, and then of course I had to like wait for my anxiety to go away, and then I sat down finally, so. What are you doing, Melissa? Twenty. Twenty-one. Two. Three. Three. Four. 
Just to be on the safe side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirty, thirty one, perfect. Miss, what are you doing? What are you doing, baby? Are you playing behind the monitor? Playing behind? Oh, are you gonna step on my crossage and, and get in trouble some more? This little thing. Come on, get moving. No. No. So, um, I wanted to mention to you guys about the not giveaway giveaway. Um. If you, or when you comment on something that you're interested in, um, I'll go ahead and leave a heart. And then this is going to last until the next uh, monthly rotation. So, probably shouldn't have mentioned that yesterday, but I felt like I was rushing to get through that thing. I don't know why, I just felt rushed. I mean, and then it even still lasted like an hour and a half. That was just a bit much. So, uh, but today I thought I would talk to you guys about my fur babies. I have four dogs, as you know, and two cats. I thought I'd tell you the story about my four dogs. If you guys are interested, I have found that most stitchers on this internet web space love animals. So, before Mandane got together and I was with my last mistake, before my last mistake and I even got married, um, his name was Tim. That's such a ugh name at this point. Tim told me that his friend had puppies and he really wanted a puppy and I said okay I would love to have a puppy too because I love dogs and at that point we had um, a little Yorkie that we were kind of we took for from his mom's health was not doing very well she had spina bifida um, Jody was just a magnificent human being, but, um, her asthma was getting really bad and, you know, she couldn't take care of Buster anymore, so we had Buster for a while. And then Tim was like, I want a big dog. I'm like, alright. His friends had, just had puppies. Sorry guys, didn't mean to do that. And, uh, he said, you know, they're pit labs, so they should be growing up to be fairly big dogs. And I said, alright, that'd be fine. And his, his main goal was to have them as outside guard dogs. So he's like, he had to work that day. He goes, go over to my friend's house and, and pick out the dog. And I'm like, alright, so um, I get there and there's like five or six puppies. Hi, nice to see you. And there was a beautiful white one and a brown one and a black one and I mean, they were all just really, really adorable. And, uh, their mom, which was a brindle, uh, pit bull, essentially, who was, and, and I don't think she was full pit, but I don't know, but she was, she was absolutely beautiful and her name was Corona. But, uh, I called him and I said, well, there's this really beautiful black one and there's a white one and there's a brown one. Which one do you want? He goes, I want the black one. I'm like, all right. So I grabbed the black one, took him home, and 
me and the black one just kind of cuddled and you know he's making himself at home and whatever and I already knew what I wanted to name him but he wasn't technically my dog he was Tim's dog because I had Buster so Tim came home and he starts thinking of names for this poor thing and he's thinking of like really stupid names too like I don't know dark night black beauty you know stupid shit and that this puppy just was not responding to and I just said well how about Vlad and his ears perked up he's like no I don't want to call him Vlad my friend's dog's name is Vlad I'm like well that's what he wants to be named so that's his name all right his name's Vlad so we had Vlad and then shortly after that we get a call or his friends tell us that you know they had two mini dogs and they needed to they still had like one puppy left and the mom and they had to give them away and I said well we'll take them and it happened to be the white one that I really wanted plus the mom Corona and I was really excited I already knew what I was gonna name the white puppy and his name was going to be Jasper and she thought I said Casper no they were calling him Whitey <laughs> For the longest time and he came home and and um, I think we had Vlad, when we got Vlad he was six weeks old and then when Jasper came that he I think they were like eight or nine weeks old so so um, so you know it was really fun to have you know the boys and Corona and and Buster but after a while you know the we thought okay well we have too many dogs so we need to let's downsize to just two and we decided to just stick with um, Vlad and Jasper so we gave Buster to the friends who we got the boys and Corona from and then we gave Corona to another one of Tim's um, co-workers and uh, so you know life went on got married um, and then Dane moved in Dane was uh, um, leaving his ex-wife who was um, really absolutely horribly into drugs and alcohol and abusive and um, you know just you know a marvelous human being so he was leaving her and we said yeah you can come and live with us that's cool um, and he brought along Sandy who is a brown coontail which apparently is a like a cousin essentially of the um, Rottweiler Rottweiler or Doberman so pretty sure it's Rottweiler um and she fit in so well like immediately like the boys just took to her um she just got on so well with them it was awesome we had originally planned on breeding vlad with sandy because they're both black and we thought oh they're gonna make really really pretty blip babies and you know that'd be great that didn't happen Sandy and Jasper bred because Jasper is more of the dominant of the two Vlad is very much a beta dog like he does not in any way shape or form take the lead in anything he just kind of follows everybody else around and that's okay because he's he's a very very sweet boy and yes there's a bit about the dogs the about the boys that I'm leaving out for right now but I'll I'll get back to that um so Dane and Sandy move in a few months go by um, Sandy has puppies Vlad um, and Jasper get into a fight and I got pissed off so we sent Vlad to go live with <coughs> excuse me a friend for a short time sorry don't mean to be making you guys sick and uh, we wound up with a German Shepherd for a very short time named Rommel who was a good dog but Sandy didn't like him and to be fair I wasn't a huge fan of his either 
he just wasn't melding with the family, so we took him back, and we brought Vlad home, and and life was good. And then um, Sandy has her puppies one evening, and I called out from work because I'm not going to work while my dogs having puppies. And she had a litter of five, four dogs and a girl, and the girl happened to be Bandit. And the girl is my girl. Like, it was like almost an immediate Im imprinting. Like, there was no way I was giving her up. She was mine. She was my baby. Okay. I'm just making sure I'm not like... I didn't mess something up. Um... If you, let's say, the next month, got a divorce, and then it was just me, Dane, and the four dogs. Um, in February, um, we went to Dane's old house because we needed to... There was some drama, and we had heard about some things that the ex had done to the trailer, and we just needed to see if basically it was still standing. And Dan had mentioned, oh, by the way, there might be a cat there. Because his ex had taken in a cat or whatever. I said, well, you know, if the cat can be turned loose, we'll just turn her loose. Well, that didn't happen either. Because as soon as we walked in that house, one, she had tried to burn the thing down. Like, she had set fire to, or tried to set fire with a lighter to the, like, you walk in the door and there's a wall there. And in the wall there was a couple of holes for, I don't know what reason, and she had tried to set a lighter to it and it didn't work at all. Hi, Diamond! Speaking of you! And this little thing... That won't sit still, so I can show you her. Hey, come here. Nope, not gonna happen. Come here. Come here, baby. My oh, baby. This little thing was so tiny. She was sitting on the cat on the stove, just emaciated and malnourished and just in really bad shape and I'm like there's no way that I'm gonna you know just turn her loose I just couldn't do it so 22 so I said we gotta take her home so we did and then several months later we move up to Taos and you know everybody is happy it's just the four dogs diamond me and Dane, you know, Diamond gains weight, Vlad gains weight, um, their stress levels are down, it's just awesome. They really, like, we move up here and they thrive. And Bandit discovered snow in great amounts and she just absolutely fucking loves it. I can't stand it, but you know, that's just me. Eleven, and then you know we've been up here for a few years and I started working over at um, ISD and one of my managers was talking about how her son had brought home this really little kid in and she, you know there just wasn't any place for her at that house so I said you know she was asking everybody who wants a cat I'll take the cat so and I had originally intended her to be for Dane because you know Diamond was kind of attached to me somewhat but that um, didn't happen <laughs> I bring home this tiny little thing who Dane named Melissa Cross and uh, she has been up my butt ever since so, so now we have the four dogs and the two cats. <laughs> it is never a dull moment, especially since Melissa just, she's, you know, she's six months old, roughly. 
So obviously she still kind of, you know, gets into things and is still fairly destructive, you know. So yeah, we've been, you know, these are our fur babies and they are just absolutely, it is so wonderful to have them. They have been such a blessing in our lives that I cannot imagine not having them. They all have their own personalities and their own quirks and they're just amazing. They're wonderful, wonderful little babies. But to go back, um, I mentioned, you know, they're uh, with the boys when I was with my ex um, they had a tendency of, uh, busting out of the yard on occasion. They would hop the fence and Tim and I would have to go and chase them down, you know, pissed off, whatever. And they would get in trouble and they'd get spankings and, and, you know, they'd learn their lesson for a minute and then they'd do it all over again. Well, Tim had a habit of being a bit more aggressive One, two, three. with Vlad in particular because that was his dog and he needed to learn better and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and by the way, they never wound up being outside dogs. We tried it one night and that just, that failed, like, fucking miserably. He just would not stop barking, would not stop crying. So I brought him back inside. So I'm not listening to that shit all night. Um, 10, 21. I'll just come back and do that. Sounds fine to me. Um, a couple of times that Vlad had gotten out of the yard. Now, remember, Vlad is not a leader. He's a follower. So he only did what his brother did. And if his brother got out, he got out. Oh, no, wait, not 21. 10. Hold on. I need to count. 10. 18. That could have been a mess. 4. Ow! Ow! Get the claw out of my leg. Thank you. Brat. So, yeah, so, like I said, Vlad is very much a follower dog. He, he does not have it in him to do things of his own volition. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, sorry! <gasps> Jesus Christ! Okay, I'm gonna pause this for a second, I'll be right back. Okay. Sorry about that, there was a fucking spider on my fire! Ivy. Look how Mimi's. Can you protect me from all of these shits? I don't know where even that bastard came from. I don't care. Needed to go away. Um, and all I was trying to do is just adjust so that you guys can see better. Look out, Mimi's. There we go. Can you see better? Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So what happened was, it was a couple times that Vlad had gotten out and he'd followed his brother, blah, blah, blah. And Tim was so infuriated that he punched Vlad in the head so hard, he knocked him unconscious. And this is when Vlad was still a puppy, obviously. Wasn't even a year old as far as I can remember.
14, 15, 16, 17. And this is significant. And now, if you guys know any different, let me know. But Vlad has never quite been the same. He's very special. Bit, bit puppy-like still. I mean, he's six years old. And he is kind of slow when it comes to learning things. Um, like, he just learned in the last year or two how to sit. Now, don't get me wrong. I worked with this puppy for a long time to teach him. And he just he just wouldn't get it, but he's he's learning now. He's learned how to sit. Now we're trying to get him how to shake and to to stop jumping on us when we get home. That has been very difficult. So apparently Tim did this twice. He knocked him out twice when he was a puppy. And when I found that out, I was furious. Now, I didn't marry this man because I loved him. I had married him because it made everybody else around me happy. Oh, he's so good for you. Oh, he's so happy. And I was also 29, and I thought, you know, if I don't get married now, I'm never going to. Me, me, me. I, I was afraid I was going to lose, you know, my youth, and, and my 20s were escaping from me. So, yeah, so I made decisions that I regret wholeheartedly. But, I mean, and I had been... Oh, whoops. Skipped. I had been looking for ways out for, for a long time. You know, we weren't even married 10 months. When I'm like, yeah, done. This was a mistake. You should go. So... Sorry, I didn't mean to. You knew I was never going to love you the way you wanted me to. Um, so, yeah, bye-bye. And he was going to give Vlad to a friend of his who wound up not wanting him. And I said, good, because I was never going to give up Vlad. Vlad was very thin when we lived in TRC. Um, and when we moved up here, he flipped up. His butt also molts. Like, not like his butt butt, but, you know, like his, the, the back end of him molts quite a lot especially when he was stressed out but once we moved up here it pretty much just has been to when the seasons change obviously because he's got a very thick undercoat so he's not nearly as stressed out he still doesn't like getting yelled at he still doesn't like getting in trouble he will talk back and he will try and snarl but for the most part he is a he's all he wants to do is just love you He's such a sweet boy. Such a sweet boy. You know, he, he is stunted in his learning curve because of what has happened to him. Now, don't, don't misunderstand me. I wasn't the best disciplinarian, but I never did anything like that when it came to the dogs. So, you know, but... Yeah, when I found out, I was I was fucking livid. I was like, don't you ever touch my dogs again. And then, you know, during the divorce, Tim's like, oh, I don't understand. Every time I get a dog, I lose it. Well, why the fuck do you think that is, you stupid asshole? You're abusive. So. So, yeah. So, we have our four babies, our, our four dogs, and then, of course, our little cats. And, and when we had brought Diamond home... Um, we had kept her in the spare room for a while because Jasper was taught by my ex to hate cats, to, that he needed to chase them off. The reason was because Tim didn't like cats. I'm like, I don't care if you don't like cats, I do. So, so uh, you know, that was a that was a point of contention, of course, but. 
but as um, soon as we moved up here, you know, we, we basically gave, like, we didn't keep Diamond in the room all the time, obviously. Like, you know, we would take her out for a little bit, let her run around the house, play with her, cuddle her, you know, keep Jasper separated from her for a while because we didn't know what he would do. And the problem is, is that he's a big dog. He's a big dog. He's a big dumb dog. And, uh, <laughs> like, he's, he's just dumb. Just dumb. But he's adorable. So he's our big old dumb dog. But, um, he, uh, he tries to play with her, and he's much bigger than she is, and she's just not having it. But now she torments him, and it's just hilarious. And Missy torments him, and he doesn't know how to take it. Like, he just sits there and whines. And I was like, well, dude, you're too big. One, two, three, one, two, three. My throat is so sore. Ugh. So I love my fur babies. I love them very much and Band, they're all fixed except for Bandit. Bandit's the only one who's not because we want to breed her once and then, like we did with them. I mean, the puppies were, I mean, like a month or two old when we got the boys and Sandy fixed. So. And Sandy was six we think she, dean's not exactly sure of her age but we're pretty sure she's 10. and then the boys are six and bandit's about to be four in december so diamond is four and then missy of course is six months old so she's she's the baby baby but she's a pain in the butt such a pain in the butt she's just she has no fear. If she could flip you off, she would. She, you know, you tell her no, she will look at you like, and you said what now? <laughs> she just loves to start shit, I think. She gets the dogs in trouble quite a lot. Hilarious, really. Until we realize what she's doing. She's a smarty part. Smarty pains. Am I missing a needle again? I feel like I'm missing a needle again. I bet you I am. Not surprised. Um, so yeah, that's about my dogs. Um, what else was I going to talk to you guys about? That's pretty much it. But, one, two, three. One, two, three. Another thing that I wanted to mention yesterday, uh, but like I said, I felt like I was rushing through even though it was still, <laughs> excuse me, hour and a half long. Sorry guys, I, I did not mean for it to be that long, I really didn't, but you know, it just kind of happens that way. Um, so I passed my last class, my social psychology class, which, you know, I'm... Not totally surprised about, but, like, it was a class I really didn't care for. And, uh... One, two, three? Yep, three. Um... I've started my forensic psychology class. I just started week three, and this week is on child abuse cases. Such a happy module, such a happy topic. And, like, the first case that we are analyzing, I mean, these people, pieces of work. And this is from a case from, from like, ten years ago. And, um, this child was just wanting to go pee, and all the parents did was scream at her, or scream at him, and threatened to give him hot sauce, and slay, slapped him, and threw him around, and yelled, screamed at him, and cussed him out. I mean, it was horrible. Now, there, I don't know about y'all, but
But I grew up with my ass whooped regularly because I friggin' deserved it. You know, I misbehaved and I got my ass whooped. But there were times where my mom did go too far. We would have welts on our legs and whatever. But And then there was other forms um, of shit that was going on in the house. But that is no excuse for how my behavior is today. My behavior today is the result of my choices. You know, I can't blame my parents for everything. I did when I was 16, but don't now. And the stepdad of this little boy, who he was being horrendous to, his excuse was, well, my, my dad beat me up. So, you know, I'm only like this because of them. My parents were horrible to me. Well, so? I mean, yes, that's terrible. But that does not give you the right to be an asshole to your kids or even your stepkids. You don't have to do or make the same choices and mistakes that your parents made with you. You have the capacity to tell yourself, I'm not going to be like that. I'm going to be better than this. I'm going to break this cycle. And once you like get that into your head, you can break that cycle. If you can't hear it in the background, I'm, uh, I've got Animal Planet going. I, I love Animal Planet. I think it's great. Normally I watch, like, um, like inter uh, Investigation Discovery or something like that. And, but tonight I, I didn't feel like it. This shit I'd seen before. Show I'd seen before and I just didn't like that show. So, one, two, three. Three, four, five, six. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. I promise I'll be finishing up here in just a second, guys. I know this is probably getting kind of a little bit longer than I promised you and whatnot, but I kind of wanted to get a little bit farther down into Darby here, so... So, so that's where I'll stop with you guys for it. Me, um, I want to thank you for for watching this today and for ram, you know, listening to me ramble and and I hope the weather is good where you are. I'm gonna get back to stitching more on this here at my stitchy spot, which is right behind me. Watch some TV. Probably watch some more Regina, because I told myself I was not going to watch Doctor Who tonight. Um, keep my eye out for any more of those fucking arachnids. <sighs> um, so yeah, I hope you guys have a great Stitch Week. Um, I'll be back next week for another Stitch With Me. Next week we'll be doing Legend of Dragoon, and hopefully that will finally be in a um, Q-Snap. Tomorrow, Dane and I have some plans to work on finish, um, FFOing some of the, uh, the Christmas gifts, and then I'm going to talk him into doing the, um, the Graham Guard for the 11 by 17, um, Q-Snap. So, and I'm going to get some more tea in me, because my throat is still kind of bleh. Um, yeah, um, so I will let you go. Um, 
So once again, with the not giveaway giveaway, just a comment on the previous video, um, the X Stitch Vid 2. Um, on any pattern that you are interested in, I will keep it open until the begin until the X Stitch Video 3. So the last week of November. So the first week of um, let's say December 1st, completely done. Let me see. Yeah, December. No. November 30th. Friday, November 30th will be the last day to, to comment. And then um, to ensure that you're in, I'll put I'll heart your comment. Um, and then I will make sure to like draw correctly later on. So you guys have a great one. And I will see you next week. Bye.